Hey guys, Brendan Fry here, and today I'm shooting from my hotel room. Unfortunately, uh, me and my girlfriend came out to the East Coast. We're here in Wilmington, North Carolina to spend the weekend, and unfortunately, we didn't know a tropical storm was coming in. So we're um, sitting in the hotel room, getting ready to go out for a little bit and see a movie and do some other things here at the beach and let this weather pass through. Now, today I wanted to shoot a video on how to build rapport in your network marketing business and kind of share the importance of building rapport and what it is to begin with. Um, now, whether you're doing it through email, phone calls, videos, or however you're doing it, you must build rapport with your leads if you ever hope to convert any of them into sales. At least that's what they say in the sales industry. And guess what? It's no different for network marketing. At the end of the day, we're all salespeople too, one way or another. Okay, now first, let's get started by defining what rapport actually is. By definition, rapport is a relationship marked by mutual understanding and trust. In other words, rapport is getting on well with another person or a group of people by having things in common. This makes the communication process much easier and usually more effective. So when you're talking with people, when you're talking with leads and prospects, they're calling you, you're calling them, you need to find grounds of, of uh, similarities, things that you have in common with them, and to really build that trust and relationship with them from the beginning. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, healthy relationships are everything in the network marketing industry. They make or break your business. So building rapport from day one with your prospects is absolutely key. You want to break the ice as quickly as possible. So in today's video, I'm going to share eight things you can do to start building rapport more quickly with the people you're talking to um, every day in your business. Number one, use non-threatening and safe topics for initial small talk. Talk about established shared experiences, the weather, um, how you travel to where you are. Avoid talking too much about yourself and avoid asking direct questions about the other person. A common thing I do when I'm speaking with prospects is I'll ask them um, you know, where they're at in case I don't already know from my caller ID. The great thing about caller ID is usually nowadays on a cell phone it'll tell you where they're from and so you can build up a, uh, some talk around that. Like if somebody calls me from Texas, I'll say, hey, um, you know, I, I noticed you're calling from Texas. Are you, is that where you currently live? And if they say yes, I'll say, oh, yeah, you all have this, the same heat we got going on here in Arizona or something like that. Just get some small talk going. The weather's usually a safe bet, something to talk about or um, anything, you know, relative, something going on in the news. As long as it's not political um, uh, or religious. I don't bring up anything political or religious. That builds up more barriers than anything usually when I'm having a conversation with people. But find little small safe topics to talk about um, outside of the business because we're always business, business, business. So it's okay when you're calling prospects and you, you bring up the business first, but at some point you want to get away from the business talk and just talk to them about something else. Ask them a question about them, um, their family, as long as it's not too personal, and find out more about them, show a genuine interest in them. Number two, listen to what the other person is saying and look for shared experiences or circumstances. This will give you more to talk about in the, in the initial stages of communication. So if somebody shares that they used to work at, for a temp agency or if they've done factory work in the past or that's what they're currently doing, you know, that's a shared interest of mine. I, I used to do the same thing. Um, I worked several temp agency jobs and I hated them. They always had the promise of getting me on full time with benefits and all that stuff and it always fell through. So I can share my, my shared pain of that experience with them. Um, and that's just one of many examples of things you can find in common with people. Um, it doesn't have to be work background. It can be family. It can be um, social. It could be whatever. Just find common interests with these people. Again, you're trying to establish a communication and connection with them. So something you have in common is, is best. Number three, try to inject a sense of humor. Laughing together creates harmony. You know, make a joke about yourself or the situation or circumstance you're in. But avoid making jokes about other people, or especially about the person you're talking to. Uh, making jokes about other people, that's considered gossip, and it's not, look, you know, it's not uh, a good way to build trust with somebody if you're out talking about somebody else. But it is, a, it is an incredible tool to use humor, because we all share that. Every ethnicity, every religious background, every, every person out there um, enjoys humor, and that's a common, it's a commonality among all human beings, um, and that's since the beginning of time. So try to get some some humor in there. Now you don't want to be just a, a stand-up comedian when you're talking to people, but make sure that you um, do share that you do have a an easy spirit and uh, you get along with people and you're fun. Number four, show some empathy. Demonstrate how you can see the other person's point of view. 
remember, rapport is all about finding similarities and being on the same wavelength as somebody else. So being empathetic will help you to achieve this. Now, like I mentioned in a previous example, that you could share your, you know, your common experiences with a previous job or something of that nature, but don't make it all about you. Um, remember, you're talking about them. You're trying to learn more about uh, the other person and find out where they're coming from. And, and you know, a lot of people want to hear, have somebody to listen to them. You know, they don't want to just have somebody call them about a business opportunity and then all they're talking about is themselves. They want to be heard out. They want to know that you're there to listen to them. You're not all about yourself. Um, that kind of il illustrates the way you're going to be able to help them later on. So if you're all about you, then you're probably like that in your business as well. So uh, make sure that you do show empathy. You know, you, you can um, see things from their point of view, uh, but just don't get too caught up in yourself. Make sure you're, you're listening to them, learning more about them, allowing them to speak. <clears throat> Number five, and this is a biggie, use the person's name early on in the conversation. This isn't only just to be polite, but it's also to reinforce the name in your mind so you're less likely to forget it later on. And I'm, I'm big on this. When I first call somebody, um, I always make sure I call them by their name. I ask to speak to whoever, John, whatever. And I try to use their name throughout the conversation. I'm terrible with names. So I make sure that I say their name pretty regularly. That way I don't forget it in the middle of the conversation, which would be horrible. Uh, but also said so I remember it later on and I also program their number in my phone So if I have somebody opt into my capture page and I'm going to call them They're on my lead list and I have a script I use to call people um, You know I make sure that they I use their real first name and I also program that number in my phone So if they call me later on with questions I can answer and say hey John How are you doing today? You know instead of just hey, it's Brandon, you know, so um, I want to make sure that they know that I care about them and show that I, I have the enough care about them to remember to even remember their name um, but anyway guys this looks really good for you so if you're talking with somebody they're gonna take it you know in today's age especially everybody's programmed as a as a number or as a button on their phone uh, we don't have to remember anything anymore so we're starting to forget everything so if you can take the time to remember their name that goes a, a big that's a big step um, to show that you really care about somebody all right, number six, ask the other person open questions. Now, open questions require more than just a yes or no answer. So, for instance, um, when I'm talking to people and I'm using my script, I usually ask them about their previous network marketing experience or their previous job experience. And so I'll ask something like, you know, what was it like that you, what was it that you liked most about your previous network marketing company versus asking, uh, so you didn't really like the last business you were in? <laughs> you know, because they're just like, no, I didn't. Um, and also because that second question is kind of negative too, you're, you're asking for something negative. Um, and it really depends on what you're asking in that situation. It wouldn't be bad to bring up negative thoughts about their previous network marketing business because you're f trying to figure out their pain. We'll get into that here in a minute, but that's uh, more along using my script. Now, the important thing about this is to ask open-ended questions. So you're not just getting a yes or no answer. The reason why is you want a flow of conversation. You want the conversation just to continue effortlessly. And if you're asking yes or no questions, then they say no, or they say yes. Um, if they don't elaborate on that, then you got to lead off with another question. And hopefully it's an open-ended one, so you get more out of it. And then you can carry on a conversation from there. Um, like when I'm using my script, I, I literally I print it out every time before I call leads. And um, it's pretty simple, but it does hit on like what are the pains they've been through in the past. Um, how can I offer a solution for them? And, you know, they're all open-ended questions, so I can get that conversation going. And a lot of the times I've noticed that I will just go off script because I don't need that script anymore. We've gotten that communication going, a nice little flow going. And it's because I'm opening questions that, that also sort of open up wounds for them. So they want to share with me what happened in the past, what, what pain they're going through now, and how they want to get out of that. All right, number seven, talk about things that refer back to what the other person has already said. So you want to find links again. You want to find links between their your common experiences. And, and like I said, the script that I use for National Wealth Center to talk to prospects helps me to target the person's pain or struggles from their past or maybe their present and also find out what, what caused it and whether they had lack of training, support, or, or something else. And so that way, by the end of the conversation, I can help them to piece it all together and provide a solution for them. And that's because throughout this whole conversation, I'm listening to the things that they're saying. I'm really paying attention, which is a is sort of a, an art that we've all kind of lost <laughs> in these days with social media and all this fast-paced um, communication. But if you're, if you're talking about things and referring back to the things that they've said in the past, it shows that you're listening to them. It shows that you care. 
um, that you understand that you really want to provide a solution for them rather than just make a quick buck off of them. So, um, and that also, I mentioned this in my script, is that you really want to, you know, you really want to show yourself as somebody who not only cares, but can, can really guide them and support them and mentor them um, in the business instead of just coming off as a pitchy salesperson. So talk about things that refer back to what the other person has said and make sure that you're showing that you're paying attention. Number eight, this is a biggie for me, so I just saved it for last. Be genuine and real. People can spot a fake from a mile away. You know, we're in this business to, like I said, to build relationships with people and to find commonalities with people and be real and um, be able to, you know, build friendships and relationships with people. Um, we don't, we're not in this business to be, you know, pitchy car salesmen or uh, be somebody that we're not. You know, um, when you do that, and I've seen other marketers out there that, have their little um, gimmicks, you know, that they're this marketer or that marketer, um, they wear this hat or that hat or whatever. Um, I've seen these things, you know, and it just, <laughs> I can't relate to those people that do that. So in my eyes, I see that as kind of a barrier, really, um, for the way I can't really relate to these people at all. And so that's why, like, in my videos and in my, in the way I just am, the way I present myself is real. I want people to Genuinely be able to see who I am, that I am who I am, and I'm not trying to pretend to be anybody else. So that way, when they get in the business with me, they know what they're getting, and they'll feel they'll feel more comfortable. You know that I'm relatable. So just be yourself, um, but while finding little connections between you and the other person, which will bring you closer together. So you know, just maintain who you are. You shouldn't pretend to be anybody else. Just someone who connects well with others. Okay, I guess I could have made this list a uh, list of nine, but I didn't. But also very important is to do what you say you're going to do. Keep in mind that rapport can be lost just as easily as it can be gained. Um, follow through with everything you say that you're going to do and keep the relationships healthy and strong. Um, this is probably most important in network marketing because oftentimes your customers are lifelong. If you do it right, if you build these relationships correctly and you do what you say you're going to do and you maintain who you are and you continue to listen to them, you continue to provide that level of support to them um, and follow through with everything you say you're going to do, then you're likely to have a lifelong customer with these people, not just another business partner. So keep that in mind that this really can make and break your business. So building rapport is a is a you know a relationship long um, process. It shouldn't ever end. Now, in a regular marketing firm or something, they build rapport quick and then they pass you off to a sales team that's going to close the sale and then you'll be done and you'll probably never ever see you again. But in network marketing, you're going to do this continuously. You're working with these people forever if you do it right. So continue to provide that um, level of support, listening to them, and keep in building that rapport through the, through the process and through the life of your relationships. All right, guys, well, that's all for today's video. I hope this has been super helpful for you. You know, whether you're in National Well Center, you're looking at National Well Center, or maybe you're in another network marketing business, you're going to need to build rapport. So I hope this video has been super helpful. I didn't have this resource when I started, you know, and I wish I did, but I've learned over the years what I needed to do. Um, but anyway, guys, if you want to see any more of the 30 day video marketing bootcamp series videos, like today's video, I'll leave a link in the description below to that entire playlist. And you can check that out there for yourself. Um, if you have any questions as always about this video or anything I've covered in a previous video, go ahead and, um, leave a comment below, or you can reach out to me. I'll leave my contact details below as well. All right, guys, well, I'll see you on tomorrow's video. It'll be day number 17 of my 30 day video marketing bootcamp series. Until then, have a great day.